This, right here, is an AND gate. It takes two inputs and gives an output only if the two inputs it receives are turned on. And this? This is a CPU built using only redstone, currently running Tetris, without any mods, plugins, or command blocks. How did the Minecraft community get from this all the way over to this? Well, this is the history of... The story starts July 2nd, 2010, with the release of Minecraft Alpha v1.0.1, which brought the addition of redstone dust and redstone torches. Except they actually didn't have a name back then, and were only called the red dust stuff by Notch in some Tumblr post, so we'll just go with that. Very little was done with the red dust stuff back then, as it would break if the player walked over it, and on July 6th, it was updated to not do this anymore. This update also brought the first ever redstone YouTube videos, like this one, where a guy makes a sheep blow up. Now, I'm gonna try and keep this video reasonably low-tech and simple, so that anyone can understand it. So, all you need to know is that a logic gate is how multiple inputs interact with each other, they make up everything about computers, and that they absolutely suck to build with only redstone and redstone torches. The first pioneers of redstone computers spent their time on the Minecraft forums, making basic things like a ticker display or segment display plots, and needless to say, there was very little hope from the general player base that making a computer could even be possible. On August 17th, a user by the name CyberS4 creates a video showcasing an absolutely huge build which functions as RAM for a computer. It can store 16 bits of memory, or just enough to store one smiley face emoticon. In the description of the video, he states that he might be working on more parts of a computer in the future, and then proceeds to do nothing else until 6 years later, where he uploads a video of himself peeling plastic off an old radio. It wasn't until two months later when the first real pioneer of redstone computing, the internet for the win, would upload this viral video of a 16-bit arithmetic logic unit he built, which is just nerd thought for a calculator inside of a CPU. What's special about this is that it was actually designed to be a part of a full working computer, and this won't be the last time we hear from this guy. What's even more special about this is that this was made before creative mode and before repeaters, so half of the redstone torches are just used to extend signals, and everything was built either in survival mode or through using MC Edit. Another month later, the user the one Laz completes and uploads the first ever fully working Minecraft computer, featuring 8 whole bytes of RAM. This was the first computer ever to feature a full instruction set, meaning it can basically do anything a modern computer can do, assuming you don't mind waiting a very long time for things to process and didn't want it to output any images. It is programmed through flickering levers and then pressing a button to save the program to its memory. Apparently, this whole thing was built in survival mode and the madman even uploaded a video of himself surviving a night without any torches underneath the computer, as if he wasn't just one creeper away from ruining all of his work. The next day, the internet for the win uploads his first completed computer. Although it did roughly the same thing and actually had no RAM at all, only using the very limited CPU registers as memories for its program. The day after that, Nerfer releases a more compact CPU design, although this had only two bytes of memories and had extremely limited operations. Innovation was kinda at a standstill at this point, with several engineers building their own PCs built on the HAT architecture, which is exactly the same thing that Internet for the Win was doing. And then, a couple of other people built 32-bit calculators, which were cool, but none of them ever really made it into a full computer build. 
things started picking up again in February of 2010, with the release of Minecraft Beta 1.3, bringing the addition of repeaters which allowed for redstone signals to be extended faster, more compact, and without having to place redstone torches everywhere. It was also around this time that red dust stuff finally gained its official name as redstone, as this is what the nerd community had called it at the time. On the 24th of June 2011, the first dual-core CPU was created by Anomalous Cobra and Jomaster15, which worked by passing the outputs of the first CPU into the input of a second and vice versa, to eventually do things twice as fast, although it could only handle 8 bits and output numbers smaller than 100, it wasn't truly dual core either, more dual CPU. The 30th of June 2011 brought Minecraft Beta 1.7 and Pistons, which allowed people to create actual working displays for their computers instead of just using redstone torches. And this was first and possibly best use on the 22nd of August 2011 by Dineon84, who came out of literally nowhere with a huge computer. Although it was only an 8-bit computer, it had 64 bytes of RAM, a 16x16 display, and a keyboard which allowed for manual inputting of letters which would then appear on screen, with the code for that being stored in 512 bytes of ROM. Essentially, the first ever Minecraft typewriter. Dineon claimed that the display was also capable of lighting up single pixels instead of just displaying words for a truly functional computer. But no video of this nor any download of the computer was ever released. Three months later, Lauren Zwayne released his Red Game computer, which also featured a full piston display, and he would continue to work through three iterations of this computer. As cool as all the redstone is, there is no video of the later iterations doing anything, and I can't figure out how to get it to do anything interesting enough to share, but just know that it existed. Minecraft 1.2.1 was released on the 1st of March 2012, adding redstone lamps, which improved on the display capabilities of pistons by making them actually light up and reduce lag they caused on people's dying Pentium 2s. However, these actually saw extremely limited use, mainly as binary output or 7 segment displays, as no new redstone mechanics had been introduced to allow more interesting designs to be built and everyone just kept using the same architecture from before. The redstone community really needed some new toys to play with, and on March 13th, 2013, they would get this in the form of the redstone update. This update added most of the more complicated and useful redstone features used everywhere today, including blots of redstone, droppers, hoppers, and most importantly of all, Comparators, which allowed for some serious improvements. However, these new features were of little interest to most people as no new CPU designs actually came out for a very long time. This was especially true for I am Mr. Hello Who Are You, who on the 17th of July 2013 uploaded what is, to my knowledge, the first video of a CPU with a true working display and demonstrates its graph drawing capabilities all without actually using anything added in the 1.5 update. And then, that was kinda just it. People stopped working on their CPUs for a few years. There were of course still people making them, but they were all extremely similar to the earliest computers. That was until 2015, when members of a server called Open Redstone Engineers began taking interest in Minecraft computers and building their own developing parts of CPUs and so on. One particular innovator of this era was a YouTube channel called Redstone Without Limits, who created an independent 2 kilobytes of RAM using comparators, and started working on a 32-bit CPU, although it doesn't appear that this project was ever finished, and the RAM module was pretty unusably big, even if it were impressive. Another innovator was Legomasta99, who made the first quad-core CPU in Minecraft, although once again held back by the fact that it was only 8-bit and did not have a true display. 
it does have inputs and outputs, so you should program it to do things like opening piston doors or really any other redstone functions with a Minecraft, which makes it practical, if you consider building a huge redstone CPU as being something practical. This guy also made an entire programming language which allows programs to be written on someone's computer and then uploaded into Minecraft by generating a bunch of fill commands that it performs automatically to write the code in. And this is probably LEGO Master's greatest achievement. Three years later, LEGO once again outdoes himself by giving his computer a GPU and a fully working display as well as having a user input panel instead of inputting code for some of the more basic functions, although it does have support for the compiler he made and can do things like drawing smiley faces or plotting graphs. Then came along 2019, which brought with it SMP Live, PewDiePie, Hypixel Skyblock, Minecraft Mondays, and the eventual resurgence of Minecraft, as the game basically becomes a hit for the second time overnight. People flocked back to their game, and the hundreds and hundreds of new redstoners flocked to build the exact same 8-bit and 16-bit computers that have been built since 2010. A notable exception to the rule is Seth Bling, who built an entire Atari 2600 emulator in Minecraft, Although this has been in the works for a few years before then, this was the year where he got it running at 1 FPS, which makes it borderline usable. I haven't mentioned this properly though, as it runs entirely on command blocks, but I thought the use of dirt and stone blocks to represent ones and zeros in memory was too cool not to mention. Then, 2020 came along. The pandemic started, and all of a sudden, a lot of very talented people had a lot of spare time, and that included the great minds at Open Redstone Engineering. This was also around the time that editing software became easier to use and easier to pirate, so everyone and their mother was editing their CPU demonstrations videos like some sort of out-of-season Apple product release. The first example of this was from Matt Batwings, who created a calculator with a full lamp display designed to be as user-friendly as possible. Another pointless computer was the one used by Red Slimecraft, which was a 4-bit computer, but was also a flying machine, so it could move. This does technically make it the first computer built without using any redstone dust at all, but it sacrifices so much functionality for its form. Then, on the 23rd of June 2020, came the video that inspired me to make this video, the QCPU by QSmalley. The main attraction of this computer is its size. It's really small for its power, and supports up to 256 bytes of memory. This is a heavily modular design that can add or remove things as they are needed as well, such as inputs that can be used whilst programs are running, adding or removing a screen if not needed. Most impressive of all, this computer also features a full external assembler, meaning you can program it like you would program any other programming language. And the assembler creates a pasteable schematic for the world that allows for that program to be ran in-game. And finally, it features a 1.27Hz clock, which is really fast compared to other CPUs, and it achieves this largely through its compact design. The fastest CPU by far was made by Fearless underscore Z on the 25th of September 2020, which runs at 5 Hz. This is roughly the fastest possible A CPU to get, as Redstone only runs at 10 ticks per second, so a CPU will never run faster than 10 Hz. But it's basically impossible to avoid using repeaters somewhere, which add delay, and this speed was achieved through sending instructions to the CPU before it finishes processing the first instructions, and being very wary of how many repeaters are placed to cut down as much time as possible. The only downside is the fact that it is just a basic calculator. June 5, 2021, Torb releases a viral video showcasing a 1Hz computer that also features both calculator functions and a full pixel display. The computer can be programmed by placing redstone torches in the ROM section according to an instruction set 
given in the butch yet in the world. Back over to Matt Batwings, on the 3rd of June 2021, he started creating game consoles inside Minecraft. They're like normal computers, but designed to play a specific game instead of having a general purpose, which is equally impressive as they are much faster than general computers due to them being purpose-built. As a result, Matt was able to create playable games such as Atari Breakout that involve a basic physics engine, or chess which has a lot of things to keep track of. Other of Matt's projects included a huge graphing calculator that can graph literally any super complicated function over the course of several hours, and an even bigger calculator that supports 16-bit inputs and 32-bit outputs. And most recent of all, on the 13th of November 2021, Sam Yuri creates and uploads the computational, humongous, unconventional number and graphics unit by Sam Yuri 2, or the Chungus 2 for short, sporting 256 bytes of memory and a 1 Earth slot. The Chungus 2 is probably the most intricate and powerful CPU, and also supports additional program memory if it is needed. Much like the QCPU, the Chandras 2 has an external programming language that can be used to create programs for it in the form of schematics, and although it's not exactly real-time processing, it can be sped up through a variety of mods and server plugins. I strongly suggest that if this video interested you, that you check out the original videos and builds themselves. All the links are in the description, and I've included some extra resources there too if you want to learn to build your own computers in Minecraft. I hope this non stablet video has been something different and enjoyable. We haven't stopped making stablet videos, but we thought a bit of variety could be fun, and it's also January. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.